What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Fantasy Mafia podcast. I am your host, Action Boss, here with uh, the Fantasy Caveman. Today, we are doing our waiver wire show. We'll go over a few injuries um, and also talk about some news that's going on that was uh, just breaking today. As of, as far as uh, today's go, it's Tuesday, so when this post, um, this news will still be relevant. But uh, first, what's going on, Caveman, today? Uh, what what what's good? What's good, Boss? You know, it's not very often you see a uh... A, a caveman and boss uh <laughs> boss uh show here so it's a rare opportunity for everybody yeah we've never uh we've never potted together um it's always been with somebody else with us but first time for everything yeah um so yeah i mean there's a couple important things going on i mean injuries are pretty important but i guess we'll start with the uh the other stuff that's going on so three tennessee titans uh, players and five other staff members have been uh, diagnosed or diagnosed positive for COVID. Uh, they have been told to shut down the facilities for until at least Saturday. So their game against the Pittsburgh Steelers could potentially be postponed. Um, the Steelers and the Titans do not have the same bye week, so they'll have to flip some things around. Um, I've seen a couple of different scenarios where – um, they move maybe the Pittsburgh and Ravens game to a certain week because they they do have the same bye week and then and then when that game was originally supposed to be played maybe play Tennessee that that week or whatever but we'll figure out we'll see what's going on with that uh, this also semi affects the Minnesota and Houston matchup because Minnesota yep. was the team that played Tennessee this past week uh, they as of right now don't have any positive COVIDs but they were told to kind of keep it mellow and shut down the facilities for a little bit. Um, as far as I know, Pittsburgh was told to kind of just plan as if they're playing Sunday. And that's the last thing I saw from them. The league told them to, to prep for their game Sunday. Tennessee has to do all their uh, prep uh, via Skype and Zoom and all that other stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see. On our waiver list, we do have a few Vikings and a few Titans. So, um, But just keep in mind that if they don't play this week, you can still grab those players, throw some fab at them, but you might be sitting on them for a week. Yep. Any- yep. Uh, it's going to be, you know, with both games, with, with uh, two games now, you know, I mean, if you have if you have one of these guys, like if you have a James Conner, or if you have a obviously if you have a Derrick Henry, or you have one of the studs from one of these games, you uh, very important for you to check the the waiver this week because I would I would definitely I'd be surprised if either game happens this week. So I definitely I would be looking on looking at these possible waiver ads to replace these guys this week. Yeah, I mean, something similar happened in the MLB, and and the Cardinals were kind of out of commission for a few weeks, right? And then they eventually came back and played the games that they needed to play. Was it the Marlins? The Cardinals Cardinals did have one too, but the Marlins were the ones that were out for like two or three weeks. Yeah, they're they're the ones that started it all. And but yeah, I mean, it's basically we just had we had something not not a virus, but a few years ago they had to postpone the Tampa Bay and Miami game because of um because of a hurricane so that's that's pretty much how i think your fantasy leagues are going to run obviously if you're hoping for derrick henry this week and he ends up not playing you just get him in a different week so that that's the kind of the downside to it but at mm-hmm. the end of the day i think the games will be played eventually uh, i don't think this affects awesome. the season being played out um everything should be good it's i mean to, to be three weeks in for the country just going over all this stuff and only have three in-season positives for for players i mean Rykel armstead has been on the list for a couple couple months now but um to have only three as up to this point i mean that's that's pretty successful i'd say yeah we, we knew everybody knew this was coming at some point you know, people i wouldn't be i wouldn't be that surprised by it we knew with how everything is now these days like positive tests were gonna come, so this is pretty sure the NFL. You knew that you know they had pro, they have protocols in place, so I'm pretty sure we'll, we might miss a couple games this week. But I don't think there'll that be, be many hiccups going forward as far as you know getting games played and all that kind of stuff. 
Yeah, obviously, once something happens, we'll post it in the hot spot. I mean, if they even move a game to, say, a Saturday or something like that, because, I mean, anything's possible, so we'll definitely keep you guys updated. As far as injuries go, we did post an injury post in the hot spot, too. Um, not a lot of new news has really come out, but this does kind of coincide with what we're talking about today because we got our waiver show. Uh, Chris Godwin suffered a hamstring injury. He could miss a couple weeks. Uh, Chris Carson suffered a knee injury. At first, in-game, I know people thought, hey, this might be ACL, but it doesn't look like it's that. All the ligaments are still intact. It's just more of a sprain. Um, but he could be, I mean, there's, there's potential that he plays this week. Or he could sit out, rest up a week, uh, not to put any other teams down, but it is Miami. I mean, they could go into that game and and run with Carlos Hyde and be fine, I think. Um, Tariq Cohen, that's the biggest, that's the, that's the most hurt one, I guess. Um, he is out for the season with uh, knee ACL, so he is out. Yeah, right after that contract. That's yeah, he got paid and he got hurt. Um, so that, I think that boosts David Montgomery. I don't think, I mean, oh, David yeah. Montgomery isn't a three down back, um, but he is, he's Might definitely going to be out there a little bit more. <laughs> you mentioned before we started, you mentioned Cordell Patterson. He's not somebody that I'm going to actively go out and get, and I probably wouldn't be throwing him into any lineups, but you could definitely see Cordell Patterson taking away some, uh, pass catching RB roles. Yeah. Uh, and then other, uh, not, not. A t- totally relevant, but we did have uh, Pittman with from the cold to the weird. His joint. He underwent surgery to repair a compartment leg syndrome in his calf. So he's uh, he's done for a little bit. That's something you don't. That's something you don't see every day. They said he'll likely be back by week eight. So he's a couple. He's a he. W- he was a name that was expected with Paris Campbell on IR. He was supposed to pick up a lot of the slack. So I think now. Going forward, you're looking at Pascal, who is probably one of the hotter ads uh, on the wire this week. Pascal and um, I mean, obviously T. Y. Hilton's still there. So if For you got to if if, you heard at some point. if they know if the, if the Colts know that he's going to be out for a certain amount of time, and they end up throwing him on IR, keep that and keep that in the back of your mind because then you could put him in your IR spot if it's eligible. Uh, a couple other ones here: Dallas Goddard could be out for a couple of weeks with an ankle injury. Russell Gage is being evaluated for concussion. Um, that that kind of boosts up Calvin Ridley even more. Hopefully we see Julio Jones back soon. Deontay Johnson also being evaluated for concussion. I saw that hit. That looked pretty rough. I didn't see the I didn't see the Gage one, but I did see the Deontay Johnson one. That one looked a little rough. Um, hopefully he's all right. I don't think he he didn't come back into the game. Uh, this one I was watching the game and I didn't even notice it. John Brown, I mean, he ended with a zero stat line, but he he left with a calf injury. I I I honestly didn't see it. I didn't know when it happened, and I didn't find out until later on in the game. They said, yeah, John Brown won't return. Yeah, he 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 was cut. He came in dealing with a foot injury that they weren't sure he was gonna go. To it was a foot that he was dealing with prior to the prior to the game, and they were they weren't sure if he was gonna go. But so he gave it a go. And then he hurts his calf. Uh, I think it was some either early in the second or late in the second or early in the third. So he missed the rest of the game. So he's a, he's another guy. You know, I mean, if you have him on your roster, he's probably either your uh, a low wide receiver three for you, or like a wide receiver high wide receiver four. So you kind of uh, Cole Beasley is a name to watch out for there when uh. If he misses the time. Yeah, we don't have um, on, on today's list, and I'll display it on the screen, Cole Beasley or Gabriel Davis aren't listed in the wide receivers because there's just a ton of wide receivers that are out there on your waiver wires. Um, but definitely two guys that, to keep your eye on. Gabriel Davis had a big game last week. He is becoming one of Josh Allen's favorite targets. Um, especially in the tougher matchups where, I mean, Stefan Diggs, he's not exactly matchup proof, but he did have to go up against Jalen Ramsey. He did have a touchdown, but he didn't have the greatest stat line day. Uh, that just opened up Gabe Davis a little bit more. So you got, you got Stefan Diggs going up against guys like say Jalen Ramsey or Stefan Gilmore or these elite cornerbacks. Um, it might open up Gabe Davis a little bit more. Now you're still going to get good numbers from Stefan Diggs, but uh, Gabe Davis is definitely a name to look out for. And then the final one I got here is Jordan Reed. Looks like he left with a couple injuries. He, he left and then he came back and then he left again. Um, but yeah, we should be getting uh, George Kittle back. So 
the the George or the Jordan Reed experience should be over with hopefully, and and we'll get some George Kittle back. So, any other injuries that I missed? I know you mentioned Pittman. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't think there was any. Yeah, I don't think there. I don't think there's. I don't think there's any. Uh, more. I think we. I think we hit on them all. Oh, at least all the, the the fancy relevant guys. There's probably some minor guys that we may have missed, but I think we hit all the fancy relevant guys at least. Yeah, there's some IDPs. I know Jamal Adams was banged up a little bit. Um, can't really think of anybody else. But if you're in any IDP leagues, which we are too, so we should be looking out for well, that. I, but I I I, th- I even <laughs> have, I know I have Jamal Adams in an IDP league or two, so. All right, so let's get into the waiver portion. Um, we got a few quarterbacks, running backs, and tight ends, and I got a bunch of receivers here. Um, it's probably even more than what we listed, but this is basically just going off of like previous performances. Uh, guys, that if you have any open room on your bench, just just stash them, sit on them. I think it's safe to say, without even getting into this, um, that Carson Wentz is probably droppable at this point. I mean, he's he's losing all of his weapons left and right, and on top of that, he just isn't playing like we've seen Carson Wentz play. Um, so if you have a Carson Wentz, you could probably replace him with any one of these guys. And as you can see on the screen, I got Jared Goff, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Nick Foles, and Kirk Cousins. So uh, starting at the top here, Jared Goff, he's been clicking with his receivers, coming off a three-touchdown game in Buffalo, uh, one on the ground, two passing. Um, he was just able to find... Cooper Cup all over the middle, found a little bit of Josh Reynolds, Robert Woods. Um, he's so, I mean, he's got the weapons there to definitely be an efficient QB1 finish around that QB11, QB12 range. Um, I, I'd say uh, he does have some good matchups too. This week he has, he's going up against the uh, the New York Giants. So, I mean, he could be one of the hottest waiver wire pickups just in this week because they yeah. do have a pretty weak defense. Um. Next one we got uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. If you want to talk about that one, I'll let you talk about that one. Yeah, with I mean Fitzpatrick this week going up against uh, Seattle. I mean not not the greatest of matchups, but you look at this past two games, he scored exactly twenty eight points in each of his last two games. So I mean, and for Fitzpatrick, it looks I'd be surprised. Based on what I've heard, if Jamal Adams plays this week, it sounds like he might miss this game. So that only just boosts. I mean, not that Seattle has a terrible defense because they're just fine, but uh, for if you're looking for if you're looking, especially like you mentioned, if you're looking for a guy to replace Wentz, I mean, I don't think you can go all wrong with Fitzpatrick. He's gonna he, with the Dolphins being the Dolphins and, you know, not being that good. You know, Fitzpatrick's going to continue. It might not It might not look that pretty, but he's going to put up numbers for you. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, Seattle, they have allowed the most passing yards in the league so far. Um, Russell Wilson is doing everything he can do, and, I mean, they're not really blowing teams out. They're, they're winning, and they're winning – they're winning pretty well, but it's not like he's just going out there and throwing six touchdowns where, where other teams aren't scoring on their defense. So um, definitely, I mean, if it has to be a shootout, Fitzpatrick is a nice way to go. Nick Foles is another one. He came in for, for Nagy and the Bears offense and replaced Mitch Trubisky. We kind of figured it was going to happen at some point. It did kind of surprise us how and when it did happen. Uh, Trubisky came off an interception, which, I mean, if there's any time to replace your quarterback, I guess that's the time to do it. But he only had, he was playing all right in that game. He, and he only threw just that one interception. Um, earlier in the game, Trubisky had a 45 yard run. He was looking at Allen Robinson, finding Anthony Miller a little bit. Yeah, I, I remember, yeah, I remember, I remember I was watching, I, I, before, before I went to bed, I was watching that game. I think I went to bed shortly after Trubisky's 45 yard run. Cause I remember posting in the, in the group, I was like, what a, that, <laughs> what a run. And then, and, and, and then just like shortly after that, he gets back. Yeah, it's crazy, but they ended up going to Nick Foles, and Nick Foles is named the starter for this week. They have a little uh, harder uh, game this week against the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, the mm-hmm. Colts have a pretty stingy defense, but um, we've seen Foles play before. I mean, he does have a 27-touchdown season under his belt. He has a Super Bowl ring under his belt. The Bears' yeah. pass catchers aren't bad at all, and I actually have another one on this list um, as we get down later on. But So, I mean, Foles could be a solid 
safe floor play. I mean, you could probably get a good 15, 17 points out of him and, and be all right. Yeah. And then the uh, and then Kirk Cousins is the other one if you want to talk about him. Oh, yeah, Kirk Cousins. I, I, I mean, I love – I mean, to start the season, you were like, okay. I mean, Kirk Cousins was kind of just one of those – one of those like blah middle of the road guys, you know, might be a solid bye week filler type guy. But you look at it, he scored in two of his three games this year, he scored twenty five points. And he and the Minnesota defense is not as kind of surprised. They haven't really been performing up to expectations of where they were supposed to be. So Kirk Cousins is basically been asked to throw a lot more than they were anticipating. And I don't know where exactly Justin Jefferson was for the first two week for the first couple weeks, which we'll, he's a name we'll, he'll get to in a bit, but he seemed to have found a connection with him. If you look at, look at he's playing Houston this week, not the greatest defense. So I think it's a really solid matchup uh, for him. So if you're, Kirk Cousins is he he's one of those not sexy names, but he'll consistently get you some solid points. Yeah, he's up until this year, he has been a pretty consistent low end RB one mid range or QB one mid range QB two. Um, obviously, I mean, you, you did figure that he was going to struggle a little bit with losing Stefan Diggs, but Justin Jefferson kind of stepped up last week. And as long as Adam Thielen is around and Kyle Rudolph and Irv Smith are there and Dalvin Cook is passing or catching passes out of the backfield, I mean, you got weapons for Cousins. So he's definitely in favorable plus matchups. I think he's a good way to go in potential shootouts um, and games where you know he's going to have to throw it. That He's definitely a, a solid streaming option and even a guy that. Again, like if, if you have Wentz on your team, you at this point you could probably just drop him. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say Breeze is necessarily droppable, but definitely try to maybe look to trade Breeze if you can, and uh, try to get somebody for him. Somebody maybe will will just bite on his name alone. Minshew maybe could be dropped. So I mean, you got a couple guys that you could replace with some of these guys that we just listed. Tannehill has a couple tough games if this game ends up playing this week. Uh, it is against Pittsburgh, so maybe you don't want to play Tannehill. Maybe not drop him, for for example, but uh, throw him on your bench and maybe pick up one of these guys. Um, but quarterback is pretty deep. Uh, there's only, I mean, there's a good handful that you want to start week in and week out. Then there's the next, there's the next group which are favorable matchups, and then there's the group where it's like, okay, well, I waited too long to draft one, and now I'm kind of stuck. So let me just see who has the best chance. So uh, that's where these guys come in: Goff, Fitzpatrick, Foles, and Cousins. All stashable, definitely guys that you can sit on for a week and see how they go. Yeah. Uh, next grouping we got is running backs. Like I said, the the biggest injury that we had was uh, Tariq Cohen this past week. Yep. If you've lost Saquon Barkley, you lost Christian McCaffrey. I mean, you've already, for the most part, you've already replaced them um, last waiver wire period. Uh, so Chris Carson is another name that we did bring up. That is a little banged up. Um, again, they go into Miami. Um, actually, I don't know if they go into Miami. They play Miami. Uh, they do go into Miami. It is in Miami. They play Miami, and if they want to hold out Chris Carson for this game or, or his knees a little jacked up this game and they just want to hold him out, Carlos Hyde is an excellent replacement for him. Mm -hmm. uh, he came in in relief last game and, and didn't look too bad. Um, so Carlos Hyde for the Seattle Seahawks, I think is definitely a good waiver wire pickup, especially if you have Chris Carson, he's a good handcuff to have, but even if not, if you're, if you're one of those teams that needs a running back, then definitely look his way. Uh, next, yeah. oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just, I was just going to say if, if, I mean, if you were, if you were smart and you drafted Chris Carson, you probably would have been a wise move to draft Hyde as the, as, as a handcuff if you're into the. If you're into the handcuffing theory, I think a lot of people that drafted uh, Carson probably also drafted Hyde. Yeah, he's. Uh, I wasn't really thinking about Hyde when I drafted Carson, but definitely it's. Uh, I mean, he's coming off a thousand yard season, so you know he could play. Well, and he, he was silently like a top. He I, I, he was. I know he was in the top thirty last year from in in, uh, in in the league. So Hyde silently had a quiet year last year. I think he's gonna. I think as as long as Carson's out, it seems like if he's out, it'll probably only be this week. But yeah, you could see, you could see a good. Yeah, I definitely could see a good game from Carson. He's not a bad cookie, and uh, 
James Robinson just had a good game against Miami too, so yeah, definitely I mean, <laughs> he's not on our list because he he should not be available. Yeah, but yeah, I don't think um, if he is, then snatch him up. He's the number one waiver priority. Uh, the next yeah. one we got is Jeff Wilson out of San Francisco. McKinnon got a little banged up too, but what else is new? Um, but Jeff Wilson, they they have a pretty uh, solid matchup this week too, going up against the the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, that's actually what that's Sunday night game. So hopefully that's not a stinker, but that is, uh, Jeff Wilson is a guy that, I mean, they, they could be playing with Nick Mullins again, might need to run the ball a little bit more. Hopefully George Kittle's back, but Wilson, if he's available, he's definitely worth a stash. Um, any one of these five guys that we have mentioned, and if you're looking at the screen, you could obviously see them before we even get to them. So there's no surprises, but it's not me. <laughs> I surprised me because I can't see it. Any one of these five guys could also be uh, decent, like just one week fill-ins for for Derrick Henry too. Uh, as we mentioned at the top of the show, if they end up postponing that game and you're without Derrick Henry, you need a replacement. Uh, Carlos Hyde, Jeff Wilson, Brian Hill, who came in in Atlanta, he he ripped off a touchdown. He looked pretty good too. Todd Gurley also looked pretty pretty solid that um, that Atlanta game too, but. Brian Hill, he seems like to be he seems to be the guy to own behind Todd Gurley. So if they want to rest Todd Gurley or if, if Gurley ends up getting hurt. Um Miles Gaskin, I don't think he's gonna be available in a lot of leagues. He should have been picked up already too. Um but we we're going when we grab these lists, we're we're looking in our own personal leagues and trying to see players that are available. And every single one of these guys is available except for one of the one of the wide receivers that I have on the list uh, because I actually own him. Um, but every single one of these players is available in in one or two of our leagues, so that's where we're grabbing these players from. Okay. Now I'll let you talk about this last guy because he's from your team, Rex Burkhead. How do you think that situation plays out in oh, New England? I, I mean, I that's it's this the New England running back situation. I know. He he's coming off a really he's coming off a really weird game. Eleven catches for ni- for ninety six yards and a touchdown on sixteen targets the past two games. That's just that's that's I mean I know I I know that he's kind of filling the James White role, which which James. Uh, hopefully everything's all good with James White. I know he's not an injury, but he's dealing with that personal, personal stuff. So hopefully he's back sooner rather than later. But I mean, in a if you talk about this week, I mean they go to play Kansas City in a in a in a situation where that's going to be a, a shootout uh, most most likely, or the Patriots are going to have to throw a ton. So you're going I think you could see Rex Burkhead have another solid, you know, he'll probably he'll probably be close to 10 targets in the passing game again. Uh so I think you could see another uh so I I don't see him getting I believe he had like 30 or something fantasy points last week or something crazy. Yeah, he got it to the end zone three times. Yeah. I don't see him getting three touchdowns again. But I think you could see, based on the double-digit uh, targets, he might and he might get a touchdown because of the shootout. So I could see, I could see a double-digit fantasy game uh, from Burka just simply because he seems to be so involved in the passing game, taking that uh, James White role. Yeah, it's um, I had to play him in the league because I was just low on running backs, but um, and, and he ended up doing me well. But he, yeah, he led the team in targets. He only had six rushes, but two of those uh, rushes ended up being touchdowns. Um, so, I mean, he's. it, it looks like Cam Newton liked to go his way. Uh, you know New England is going to have to score points this game if they want to try to keep up with Kansas City. Um, hopefully it's a good game. Hopefully Cam Newton's not out there throwing for 97 yards uh, only, like we saw Lamar Jackson do last night. But, um yeah, so I mean Rex Burkhead could be could be a solid way to go. So to sum up our running backs, we got Carlos Hyde, Jeff Wilson, Brian Hill, Rex Burkhead, and Miles Gaskin. Yep. Uh, going into the wide receivers, like I said, there's a ton. Yeah. Uh, but even beyond the list that we have here, there's even more than that. Um, a lot of these guys had pretty solid games just this past week. Some of them have been pretty more consistent uh, than the others, like. 
I mean, and then some of them are just like surprised out of nowhere. Like we kind of knew who T. Higgins was. We just didn't think that 2020 was his year with them having Tyler Boyd and AJ Green and um, and John Ross and and the rookie quarterback not knowing like who how he was going to spread the ball out. But he comes in and has two touchdowns last week. Both of them were were short yardage uh, in the red zone within the ten yard line touchdowns. Um, mm -hmm. He picked at 33 overall, so a high pick, second round pick. Uh, but he is a, definitely a guy that that's on a lot of waiver wires, so he he could be picked up. And then on the opposite side of things, it's like nobody even had this guy on his radar, and he ends up with two touchdowns as well. And that's Cedric Wilson for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, yeah, that, that 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 talk about coming out of nowhere. Like he's what the, the number four op number four like wide receiver receiver option or something like what probably the what? number four wide receiver and like the sixth target because you have to throw in uh zeke and dalton schultz too so yeah, he's like <laughs> he's like at best like their sixth option and i mean i i know i know because dallas defense has been suspect because your uh prescott's having to throw a, a ton but i don't i don't care how good your offense is a six a sixth option in your pet in your passing game having this kind of game out of nowhere that's they had uh, the Cowboys had six guys uh, with at least six targets last game, and um, I mean that includes Dalton Schultz and, and Cedric Wilson, and then you're, and then your uh, the four wide receivers that they had. But I mean, if if you if you want to just base everything off of one week and grab Cedric Wilson, by all means, that's why we threw him on the list. But I you, you got to yeah. think they got Michael Gallup, they got C.D. Lamb, they got Amari Cooper, and they got Ezekiel yeah. Elliott, so. Yeah. He's not going to have another five for 107 and two touchdowns again. Yeah, you're not, and you're going to remember Dak Prescott. Like Dak Scott Prescott, who threw 57 times. So if he, somebody's going to throw 57 times, odds are you know somebody is going to emerge somehow. So yeah, I don't. I wouldn't expect another 57 pass attempts from Prescott next week. <laughs> Uh, next guy we got on this list, um, Brandon Ayuk, the wide receiver out of San Francisco. He is, he's kind of a, uh, a gadget. Well, he's a wide receiver, but he's a, he's, he's a nice gadget player because he can run out of the backfield. He had three rushes for 31 yards and a touchdown. Uh, he was targeted the most for the San Francisco 49ers eight times, caught five for 70. Uh, with George Kittle potentially coming back, I mean, I don't see too much of that going away because they still need a number one receiver, and it looks like Ayuk is kind of filling in that role. Uh, so he's definitely a guy to target. It's the quarterback situation that really scares me the most. Uh, you got Nick Mullins there. When Jimmy G comes back in this in this offense is rolling a little bit more, um, then guys like Ayuk and Kendrick Bourne and guys like that will be a little bit more uh, more sexy names. But right now, I mean, I'd still want to hold on to Brandon Ayuk if you could get him. Um, try to, I mean, with with so many wide receivers, you shouldn't have to pay up for any of these guys. I mean, if you absolutely want one of them, throw some fab at them. But um, you don't need to go out there and just overpay because if you don't get one, you could just grab another. That's that's the yeah, way. Unless you're in like a, unless you're in, unless you're in like a, a sixteen team league and there's oh, yeah. four wide receivers or or something like that. Like a lot of these guys, like they're so closely mapped together. If you don't get one, you can just simply get get the next one. So. And of the three that we mentioned so far, I think Ayuk is, is probably the one that I want the most. Um, mm -hmm. In order, I'd probably put him Ayuk, Higgins, and then Wilson. And then as I mentioned more names, I'm just going to move Wilson down the list a little bit more. <laughs> uh, the next one we got is Justin Jefferson. He was um he's minnesota vikings first round pick he went seven for 175 and a touchdown on nine targets yeah. um i mean that's part of the reason why kirk cousins is on our list uh he's why they haven't been using justin jefferson you asked a little bit earlier in the show it's because they thought ola bc johnson was the number two wide receiver but uh it turns out <laughs> yeah justin jefferson is the guy <laughs> he is he's the one guy like i said he's the one guy out of everybody on that we're going to mention this is even tight ends too that i don't even have listed yet jefferson is the one guy that i have owned in my league i just know that he he's been available in quite a few leagues so that's why he's here uh, but after this week he shouldn't be available that much yeah. go out and grab him i've, been, I've actually been debating i've been debating trading brandon cooks for him that's how much i like justin jefferson so 
Yeah, I mean, it's... No, I'd love, I love, like, it, especially if he has secured the number two job over that no-name guy they had before at number two. Uh, man, and, and if this Minnesota defense continues to struggle like it has been and Cousins continues to be... If Cousins is putting up uh, low-end QB1 numbers, you're going to see that correlate into a lot of uh, success for Justin Jefferson as well. Yeah, he's uh, he was one of my favorite wide receivers coming out of college. Um, I'm glad he went to a spot where... Glad he went to a team that actually needed a guy, like needed a number two. Not like I mean, I mean CD Lamb. I think was the 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 best wide receiver coming out of college. Um, him and Jerry Judy, and, and Judy ended up going to a team where with Cortland Sutton down. Now he's going to be used more. But CD Lamb went to a team where they didn't even need a wide receiver. So it's it kind of just pushed my my thoughts on him back a little bit. But Justin Jefferson going there and kind of just immediately filling in that uh, that Stefan Diggs role is. It's huge. I mean, I like the move. I, I if you could go out and grab him, definitely grab him. I think he's a good way to go. Yeah, he. I th- yeah. I, I mean, out of all the guys we're mentioning on, on this on the on the list, he he he'd be number one. He'd be my number one priority. Uh, Braxton Berrios is another one. Um, is one of Rye Dog's guys. He's yeah. he's been liking this guy for a while now, but he's actually been pretty consistent this year. Uh, four receptions on four targets last week for 64 yards and a touchdown. The week before, I believe it was five targets. Anybody might have caught them all for a touchdown. Let me just go bring it up real quick. Um, mm-hmm. Can I find them? Yeah, against the 49ers, he didn't do too bad. Uh, it was six targets for fi- or six receptions on eight targets for 59 yards and a touchdown. So I mean, for a guy that wasn't even drafted. Uh, a month ago in your drafts to have back-to-back weeks with with uh, more than five targets and, and a touchdown in each week definitely another waiver wire pickup um, this Jets offense is horrific but if there's a guy that's kind of trending upwards as far as like putting in your lineup as a flex or a, or a low-end wide receiver too I think it's Braxton Berrios yeah I mean and we'll have to see because I they they say uh, they say Mims could return week five, and then you got you got to see uh, Par- when Perriman and Crowder are fully healthy. And the bottom line is that's not well. That's just I mean Bar- Barrios, you know Barrios end up being their number one wide receiver at the end of the season. That's how messy that uh, Jets receiving group is. So I think uh, if you're gonna get I think now, if you wanna, if you wanna take a stab on it, stab on him now, especially with all these guys banged up. I do think he's more of a like a like a this week only kind of guy versus a, a season long because you figure once Crowder and Perryman get back, and then once Mims gets back, they're gonna want to involve him. So I mean, I'd like Burials for this week, but I don't know how much beyond that that I would be a fan of him. Yeah, grab him while he's cheap. The Jets do play Thursday night, so you can throw him in and get some points from him right off the bat. Just not in the flex. Yeah, just don't throw him in the flex. Um, (laughs) Corey Davis is another one. He's been kind of just creeping up boards too with A.J. Brown being banged up, and because Tannehill's just been looking his way. Uh, Again, it's a tough matchup this week if they even play. Uh, but eventually that game against the Steelers will be played, and, and that's going to be a tough matchup. But if he's available, if he's out there, grab him, uh, flex him in some situations, hold on to him on the bench, sell him when he has a big game. Uh, good name there. Scotty Miller jumps back onto the list again. He had a disappointing two weeks ago after he was a big after he was a big pickup, and then. Um, and then uh, Chris Godwin went down with a hamstring injury. He could miss some time. So, I mean, I think Scotty Miller just kind of bumps right back in there. It's uh, Tom Brady seems to like him going his way. You can't just throw all one-yard touchdowns to Mike Evans. You have to spread the ball around a little bit more. So I think Scotty Miller is a good option there. And then uh, even though he might be he might be more owned than not because people did pick him up a couple weeks ago. And then uh, Alan Lazard is another one. He's... Uh, He's coming off that huge game against um, who did they play? I forgot who they played. 
Oh, they played the Saints. Uh, coming off the huge game against the Saints, with or without uh, Devontae Adams in the lineup, I mean, Alan Lazard, I think, has at least cemented himself as the number two. So when they have Adams, maybe that opens up Lazard a little bit more. Uh, when they don't have Adams, then he's the number one. And um, I mean, he was doing some, he was doing pretty well against the the tough secondary that the Saints have. So um, yeah. that's that's these names. Like I said, uh, Gabe Davis and Cole Beasley could get a little bit of a jump up there if John Brown is out for some time, um, or Stefan Diggs has a tough cornerback matchup. Um, any other names that you could think of? I mean. There's there's uh, probably I'm, like twenty I'm more. <laughs> there's a, there's I mean like a wide receiver is so deep and I mean I'm looking at a guy maybe a guy uh, another guy from Denver and KJ Hamler. Yeah. Maybe another guy. I mean, he's a guy you could look at with Sutton hurt. Uh, I think Greg Ward was another, another one I saw. From, yeah, and then another guy from Tennessee and Adam Humphreys is another name that, and he's had a pretty consistent uh past couple of weeks so i think you could he's in like they're so these these guys are so, like i think i think obviously justin jefferson is the headliner and the top name here but after justin jefferson it's just a bunch of guys who could be solid solid bye week fillers or solid guys if you're looking to replace some injured guys so you can you'd be fine with grabbing any number of these guys yeah, there's uh if you, if you need a wide receiver or if you want to just play one of these guys as a flex, they got a plus matchup. Grab them and you don't need to spend a lot of fab. I mean, Justin Jefferson, you're probably going to see go for a little bit. Um, if people are buying into the the hype of T Higgins or Cedric Wilson because they had multi touchdown games, you might see them go for a little bit. But if you don't want to spend a lot of fab, you can end up with one of these other guys. You could probably get Braxton Berrios after the waiver is clear for free. So, um, if you want, if you absolutely want a guy, throw some money at him. But if not, then you could just wait and, and grab one of these guys after. Yep. Last up, we got tight ends. Been kind of an underwhelming position this year. We've lost uh, um, lost a couple to injury. Uh, George Kittle. We lost. Uh, who else did we lose? Oh, I'm drawing a blank on the guy from Dallas right now. <laughs> Oh, Blake Jarwin. Yeah, Blake Jarwin. We lost him first game of the season. Got a couple guys that we thought were going to be excellent but haven't. Got a couple guys that we didn't think were going to be that good and just kind of just jumped into the lineup. We got, I mean, just two of those guys are right on the list. Not that we didn't think that they were going to be good, but we just thought that guys on their teams were going to be better, and these guys ended up taking the top role. Three of those guys, actually. I guess you could put the first one in there. So the first one we got is Mo Alley Cox um, out of Indianapolis. He is huge. He is uh, he's he's catching a lot of balls out there in Indianapolis, um, especially with the injuries that are going down. Philip Rivers for the past 16 years, he's liked using his tight ends. Um, he's had Antonio Gates, he's had a little bit of Hunter Henry, and now he gets Mo Alley Cox, and um, he is coming off of. I know last week, week two, he had a huge game over 100 yards. Uh, this past week against the Jets, he ended up with three catches for 50 yards and a touchdown. So giving you just solid tight end one numbers for you um, and a position where that one touchdown or even 50 yards could could be make or break your, your week as far as the tight end position goes. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a name. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely a name to keep an eye out for, especially with all the injuries that they – they suffer. Somebody's gonna have to catch passes. I know they said uh, that uh, Trey Burton has a chance to return this week, which may, which I for I, until I read, it, I didn't even know the Colts had Trey Burton. <laughs> but I guess they have Trey Burton. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a, he he's one. In, I think for me, the number one name on this on my on my list would probably have to be Eric Ebron. Uh, especially for this week. I, I mean, I like the matchup versus Tennessee. And, I mean, he's in the past two games against Denver and Houston, he has uh, he has eight catches on 12 targets for 95 and a touchdown. So some solid production. And Tennessee in every game this year has, a, has allowed a touchdown to a tight end. So I think he's – if you – uh, if for some reason George Kittle doesn't return this week, or if you're still reeling from another a different tight end injury, or if you had Blake Jarwin or something, I think Ebron 
I sco- I I honestly think I scooped him up and dropped him four times in my main league already because <laughs> I ca- I never I traded away one of my tight ends. So, but I think he he uh he's a little bit he's a little t- t- touchdown dependent for me. But I think I think he's a solid bet to score again this week. So I think you could you could certainly do worse than a guy like Ebron. Absolutely, he wasn't really. I didn't have him really on my radar, but he's definitely not a bad option to go with. Um, there's, I mean, you could definitely do worse. There's no doubt about that. It seems like he has taken over sort of the tight end one role there in Pittsburgh over uh, Vance McDonald. So, and, um, you know, as, as long as Big Ben is healthy, he could sling it to anybody. There's really, I mean, and Deontay Johnson, if he's out for some time, they're going to need somebody to step up. So it could be Ebron. Uh, next guy I had on the list was Jimmy Graham. Uh, kind of just seeing a, a revelation from him. He's been, it's been a while since we saw good Jimmy Graham. It looks like we're seeing it again. He has, he had seven targets in week one, kind of had a rough week two, and then comes back with another 10 targets uh, this past week for six receptions, 60 yards, and two touchdowns. I believe he caught one of his touchdowns from Trubisky and then another one from Foles. So he's uh, definitely, it's, it's not like the quarterback change should really change uh, the way that he plays. Um, he's just in there showing Cole Komet what to do, how 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 the game is played and just kind of just uh, giving us fantasy owners that one last crack at Jimmy Graham, the, the Jimmy Graham that we, that we love and we miss. And uh, he's, yeah, he's been, miss it's, Jimmy Graham. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice to see him back, hopefully back. And we'll see how he does with Nick Foles now uh, quarterback in the Chicago bears, but he's up there now. Another guy that kind of just uh, took the reins over and, and we haven't even heard from their other guy too much until, uh, Sunday night, but Robert Tanyan of the Green Bay Packers, um, he's been he's been pretty solid. I mean, there's definitely other tight ends out there, but it looks like um, it looks like uh, Aaron Rodgers is going his way a little bit more. Uh, he had uh, five targets; he caught all five of them for 50 yards and a reception the week before, or for a touchdown. The week before that, he went for two receptions, 25 yards, and, and a touchdown. So back to back weeks with touchdowns. Um, obviously, if Adams comes back and Lazard and MVS are all kind of clicking, who knows how how much Robert Tunyon is going to get? But until until that happens, and, and if he's on the field, he's uh, he's definitely going to give you some opportunity for some fantasy points. Yeah, I mean, and, and to mention though, he has he has another he has a very favorable matchup versus a very shoddy Atlanta defense who just allowed the Bears to come back on him. So, uh, I mean, and uh, the Falcons have actually allowed four touchdowns to tight ends in their three games this season, though, I think. Uh, I think I think he's another guy that has a decent bet. He's kind of, he's another guy, I think, He's kind of like a lesser version of Ebron to me. He's he might be a little bit touchdown dependent, but I think he's one of the safer bets to to get a touchdown. So Yeah, if you can I mean for, for the tight end position, unless you have like a Kelsey or a Kittle or a Mark Andrews or even a Waller who kind of disappointed this last week, but he was a little banged up. Mm-hmm. If you're going with a if a tight end beyond those four or five, um, you're really looking for either one touchdown or you're looking for just a couple catches to just to save your week. I mean, you're not going to get 20 points a week from your tight end. You're you want unless, somebody unless it's Travis Kelsey. Yeah, unless it's Travis Kelsey, but even he didn't do that. Um, even he he didn't do that yesterday. He had some catches for what what was he at? I forgot what he was at. Like 15 15 points yesterday, which is a low game for him. It, it, it felt it felt <laughs> like he did a lot better than that. Um, but he's but yeah, any of these other guys, you just you want just more consistency you want uh you you want them to have the opportunity um guys that like mo alley cox and robert tynan are, are in there because other guys are injured well not because other guys are injured they're getting the ball because other guys are injured on their team uh where jimmy graham and robert tynan are just kind of stepping up uh eric ebron we know big ben he he does like to use the tight end a little bit and if deontay johnson is out he could definitely step up there so you're definitely getting some opportunities um, if you could get five catches for 50 yards, 
10 points in a full PPR. I mean, that's that's definitely a way to go out of your tight end. You should be satisfied with that. And then anything beyond that is just bonus. Pretty much, yeah. Other than that, I think that is that's all we got for waivers. Um, again, there's I mean, there's more tight ends out there too. There's not as many there's, tight ends yeah, as there's wide receivers, but there. we can name another three or four. Tyler Croft had a two touchdown game in Buffalo. Um, Dawson Knox seems to be their number one, but he was kind of banged up, so that's why Croft was in there. Uh, you got Dan Arnold in in Arizona, that high fly power, high fly powered offense. They if they're if they're just throwing the ball a lot, I mean that's just that's just more opportunity for a guy like Arnold, even though he hasn't really put together that fantasy game that we want yet. Gerald Everett looked pretty good uh, for the Rams last week, but they still have Tyler Higby, so. You got a bunch of names out there that you could look at. Jordan Jordan Akins from Houston's just another name to throw in that mix. So yeah, I mean they're, they're still they're still trying to find uh, a guy to just catch as many balls as DeAndre Hopkins. So uh, they're That's just right. chucking it all over the field. But that's going to be it for the waiver show. Make sure you guys check us out on the website, thefantasymafia.com. We got our Facebook page, The Fantasy Mafia, and The Fantasy Hotspot. So check out those pages. Um, on Twitter, uh, Dr. Fantasy Sports is the doc. Uh, I am Jerry Wilkie FM. Uh, do you have a Twitter, K-Man? Um, I do, but I have no idea what it is. <laughs> All right, so don't follow that one. Uh, <laughs> and that's... That's going to be it for today. We'll see you guys tomorrow is our ranking show. The doc will be going live for that. Uh, so check that out. Thursday, we have Thursday Night Football for the uh, the Broncos and the Jets. Um, so not too many fantasy options in that game, but we'll talk about what there is. Gore. Yeah, and then get ready for <laughs> uh, Sunday's matchups, and hopefully we have some news on the Tennessee game for this weekend. Yeah. So until tomorrow for the ranking show, we'll see you guys then. Yep.